Go is the most popular and favorite game in the world. Without doubt, football is the most popular sport in Africa and in Nigeria. Nigeria has produced many soccer legends around the world such as Kenneth Boardman and many others. Nigeria is in West Africa. It's the most populous black nation in the world as well as the seventh largest producer of oil. Nigeria is enriched in culture and tourism. Despite her richness in mineral resources and wealth, there is still huge poverty among the citizens. Nigeria is divided into states and ethnic groups such as Igbo, Hausa and Yoruba. The Igbo land is in the southeastern region of Nigeria, which has produced many legends like late Nnamdi Azikiwe, the first Nigerian president after independence in 1960. The Igbo land has other legends in other areas like football. All right. Not the one goal, there's another goal for the Movie. Your only brother. You know what we will do? We are going to kiss. Let's go. <laughs> And in the music industry. Nigeria is known for many sports, of which her main sport is soccer or football, as it is popularly called, in which she had won so many cup titles across the globe. Nigeria soccer has also produced well known football legends across the country and in the international scene. People like Kristen Chuku, Emmanuel Okala, JJ Okocha, Shegun Odegwemi, Kan Nwanko, Finidi George, and Kenneth Bodman, just to mention a few. Enugu, southeastern part of Nigeria, is the home of the most successful and celebrated football club in Nigeria and in Africa, the Rangers International Football Club. Join me now as we follow the life and times of an African and Nigerian legend. Talked about Kenny Boardman, the great defender out of Nigeria. Wow! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Such a beautiful, handsome boy! Oh my God! Wow! I have a name for him! What name? Kenneth Okechuku Boardman. That's a lovely name. Thank you! In 1973, Kenneth enrolled in a Catholic high school called CIC as a freshman. Good day, class. Today, we shall be discussing Nigeria football. You see, Nigeria has produced so many football legends across the country and in the international scene. Does any of you know any of the Nigerian football legends? Okay, you tell us. Nigeria has produced legends like Christian Chuku. He inspired me to have great interest in football. I will play for Rangers and Nigeria. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You see, I love your courage and your dreams. But you have to pay attention to your studies, okay? Work hard on your football skills. And every other thing you have in mind will be possible. So whatever you, you have in mind to achieve, you will achieve, okay? As a freshman, he immediately made the team of the high school. In his second year of high school, he became the youngest player in the history of the school to make it to the high school soccer team. Coach, what do you think? Am I good to go? Yes, you have what it takes. If you have the determination, the skills, hard work and aggressiveness to succeed in football. Just believe in yourself and work hard. Success will be yours. Let's go, boy.
He won many games for the high school and trophies during his year and the school became a powerhouse in the state. The school was already popular for its academics. His performance earned him a call to join the biggest and most successful team in the country and Africa, Rangers International FC of Enugu. Welcome, Mr. Boardman. Welcome, Ken. You can sit. You see, everybody that was in the field today saw how the game went. Your son, Ken, made us very proud by helping us win a very important trophy. When I was in his class earlier today, he said he was going to do it. And he did it. I am very proud of him. Yeah, yeah he is an intelligent hero. Some Rangers officials that came today are very much interested in him. That's a good news. Very good news. At his young age and the youngest in the high school team, he became a star in the school and in the town. He helped the school to win city and state titles. He was invited to the state team where he excelled and became a star. His performance earned him a call to join the biggest and most successful team in the country and Africa, Rangers International of Enugu. Rangers International FC is the best, most popular, famous, prestigious football club in Africa. Rangers have won many trophies and awards more than any football club in Nigeria and Africa. Kenneth signed for Rangers in 1979. Traditionally, when you sign for Rangers, it takes about two to three years for a new player to make the first team of Rangers International because of the competition among the top players. But Kenneth was the youngest player who signed and made the team within a few months. Kenneth won many trophies and awards with Rangers. Within five months of signing a contract with Rangers International, in 1979, Kenneth was invited to join the Nigerian national team, Flying Eagles, with late Stephen Keshi, Adil Koke, Adil Labu, Lukman Ocean. In 1980, after Nigeria won the African Cup of Nations, he was invited to the senior national team, the Green Eagles, which is now called Super Eagles. He played many games for Nigeria, both at home and international. He played games for Nigeria at Brazil, England, Norway, Iceland, Portugal, Kenya, Ghana, Libya, and Egypt. Ken's football sources from elementary school to high school to state school to Rangers to Flying Eagles and to Green Eagles was phenomenal and impressive. It was a great story to tell. His peers and fans were impressed but not surprised because of his level of focus, performance, passion, hard work and commitment to the game. While having successful and impeccable seasons with Rangers and Nigerian national team, the Green Eagles, Kenneth received four years athletic scholarship from Alabama A&A &A, through Udemba, former Vasco da Gama player and Nigeria international who graduated from A&M and University of San Francisco in 1982 through Andy Atwebu, former Mighty Jess of Joe's player at Nigeria International who graduated from University of San Francisco. I left Nigeria on September 1983 to the United States. I could not believe my eyes when I arrived at the airport. The number of people that came to the airport to see me off. All my family members, friends, and fans. It was a very emotional day and also a joyful day. It was an emotional day because I will miss my fans, family members, and friends. It was a joyful day because I will be traveling to the United States to pursue my dreams. I was also amazed to see traditional dancers that came to the airport to perform, to see me off. It was just beautiful. The dancing, the people, people were enjoying and having fun. It was like a celebration. Up, 
But I was glad that I made that decision to travel to the United States. An boatman arrived at San Francisco Airport in September 1983. I arrived at San Francisco Airport in September 1983 from Lagos. I was very excited when I arrived in San Francisco. I have traveled all over the world including England, Norway, Iceland, Ghana, Germany, Portugal, Sweden, and many other countries. But San Francisco was just beautiful. Very unique place, different kinds of people. It was just uh, unbelievable. You can see the city. It's just... Uh, a beautiful city. I love San Francisco. My friend came to the airport and picked me up and took me to the University of San Francisco. When I arrived in University of San Francisco, we went to Steve Neguesco's um, office to meet him. And that was the first time I was meeting him because we've been communicating through mail. At the time, there was no uh, email or Instagram or Facebook. It was just um, a straight uh, 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 mail. And uh, so it was uh, really amazing, you know, the first time I met him. He gave me a huge, a big welcome. And uh, we sat in his office and, uh, you know, he started sharing information about the school, about practice, about education. And, you know, he started educating me. Immediately he took me, you know, like his son. He was just like my father. And uh, I was so happy and excited uh, to meet him. And uh, unfortunately, he just passed. And uh, that was the saddest day of my life he was the guy that did everything for me uh, brought me uh, from nigeria took care of me including the wife mercedes um, these people took care of me it was just unbelievable so when he passed it was like uh, i lost my father it was um, a, a a big deal you know when i came both of them, Steve and the wife, made me uh, comfortable, provided everything for me. Coming into a new country, I didn't know uh, 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 anyone, you know, they, so they took care of me, made me uh, uh, feel very comfortable, and uh, it was just uh, unbelievable. Then, uh, after meeting him, I went uh, to my room, and uh, the next day, I was able to meet the players in, a, uh, in our stadium and uh, it was just um, uh, unbelievable how the players also uh, welcomed me and uh, immediately uh, I started making friends and that was it. He attended the University of San Francisco for four years. During the four years, he was playing soccer for the University of San Francisco. He became the captain of the team in his third year and fourth year. He was a superstar in the school and country university level. John Bustos here, teammate of Kenny Boardman from 1983 to 1986 at USF. Man, it was great playing with Kenny. The guy was built like a freight train. The strongest guy on our team, without a doubt. Kenny coming from the youth national team, then the national team of Nigeria. No, but Kenny, um, it was a pleasure playing with you. Uh, we had some spectacular games, being a top national team in the U.S. at the time. Um, I know you won lots of awards, Kenny, every year, West Coast player team, uh, All-American. So it was, uh, it was sensational. We had a great time on the field, big success. Um, Kenny named me the king. I've always had that name, the King, I think because I 
motivate it, help organize, help keep the group together and moving forward. But Kenny was the rock on the field. That guy, uh, you couldn't stop him. Solid, good skills, super strength, speed. At practice, I tried to kick the living daylights out of this guy sometimes, and I end up hurting my own leg trying to kick him. So yes, this was a great time, and Kenny, we knew you were gonna go on to do some big things in life because you always had that determination and the drive, and you always played to win. You played for success. You never gave up. You were a fighter, man, and that's why I always liked uh, learning from you, hanging around with you, playing with you. That there are many cultural differences between Nigeria and the United States, such as the attitudes, food, mindset, and communication style. I came to the U.S. with professional attitude, watching my diet, hard work, doing extra practice, avoiding alcohol, discipline, and high-level performance. After my arrival, we had an important game against our rivalry, UCLA. Very important game. Winning the game will help USF in national ranking. USF have won more national championship than any other school in the United States. But UCLA was also a powerhouse. They've won many championships as well. One of my teammates invited me to a party a night before the UCLA game. And uh, other players also were invited. So we went to the party. It was a fabulous party. A lot of drinks, a lot of uh, ladies, dancing and it was just unbelievable i really enjoyed the party but uh, as a disciplined player i left 10 o'clock 10 p.m because i needed to rest before the game the next day but um, about few of our players came back 2 a.m. in the morning and I was not very happy because of my mindset and my professional attitude about the game and uh, the next morning I went to my coach uh, Steve Neguesco and she had um, uh, uh, what happened and uh, typical Steve he said Kenny uh, you need to understand that um, there is a reason why I brought you. I heard so much about you. You are disciplined, hard work, attitude, and performance. Uh, you should understand that some of these players in our team are meatballs. It was so funny, Steve, <laughs> calling the players uh, meatballs. He was just trying to tell me that there, there were players who were not serious at the time, although they were in the team, but there were also players that were serious. And uh, he also said that um, they should use their head and understand that um, uh, we had important game, uh, which means that they should have gone home from the party earlier, like I did. And uh, he said to me, um, um, but I have to share this to you Kenny um, winning championship is very important to the school but um, I should also understand that um, that I was there also to get my education enjoy myself and of course won, win championships and uh, anyway after speaking with him and uh, the next day uh, we played 
the game, it was an unbelievable game against UCLA. Uh, first half, no score. I was overlapping from defense, trying to support the attack uh, from the midfield and the forward. And uh, I did all I could. And uh, the game actually ended with goalless throw. And, uh, but it was a fantastic game. So after the game, um, the coaches from uh, my team, Steve, and the, and the press, um, I also had an interview after the game with the press, uh, and the other teammates from, from UCLA, you know, they congratulated me and, uh, because I had a fantastic game. Uh, but one thing I learned from uh, Steve in that conversation, um, I realized that um, I was not just here at USF, University of San Francisco, Cisco to win trophies or to win games. I was also there for my education to make sure that I graduate. I was also there to, um, uh, to, to, to win championship and also to have fun. So um, having that discussion with Steve actually changed my mindset. I started to understand that uh, it was just not the uh, 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 all about winning trophies and uh, winning the games. That I was here in United States also to enjoy myself and also to obtain very good education. So that conversation actually um, helped me to understand uh, what I was in US for. You know, because I came with that professional attitude, it's all about winning. And uh, so I really learned a lot and uh, 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 from that conversation with Steve. And also the cultural uh, uh, difference in terms of uh, how people perceive uh, 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 the game of soccer and also um, how people uh, multitask. It was not just winning the game, but also being able to enjoy yourself during the game, being able to enjoy yourself after the game, being able to obtain your education. It was just um, um, a good learning process for me. And, um, you know, I learned a lot from that conversation with Steve. I went to a party organized by the athletic department and that party involved um, uh, uh, parents, uh, teachers, uh, uh, players from different sports, basketball, baseball, soccer, tennis, and uh, in that party, um, it was a buffet party. You know, of course, uh, we had um, alcohol as well. And, uh, you know, coming from Nigeria, I wasn't used to buffet. Usually when you go to a restaurant, they serve you, or you say what you want and they serve you. And uh, so I went around looking at uh, different kinds of food, all this food. I wasn't used to those foods. I was, um, uh, look for some reason, looking for a goosey, pounded yam, rice, plantain, the Nigerian food that um, I was used to. Uh, for some reason, I was looking, maybe I can uh, 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 find those uh, food. But anyway, um, uh, one of the players uh, told me to try uh, pizza and um, I first asked him what was that he said pizza I said okay um, uh, uh, maybe I will try but it looks like a, a, a kid's poo poo it looks like a shit oh my god everybody there people overheard me and uh, with my accent well everybody looked at me and the people started to laugh <laughs> I started to laugh myself you know and uh, typical me, I decided to try the uh, uh, pizza and uh, unbelievable. When I tried it, my teammates, they couldn't believe it. They all started to come one by one asking me, oh, Kenny, what's going on? 
Um, I thought you didn't like uh, pizza. I thought you called it uh, poo poo and uh, and shit, and you now eating it. I said, guys, I have to confess, uh, this is delicious. I love it, and everybody started to laugh, and that was the uh, history. I started to like uh, pizza after the party. Every Friday, I will order pizza from a restaurant called Pascuelas. Uh, fantastic. Uh, uh, actually, the ones that I order from Pascuelas uh, was much better than the ones they brought in the party. So, and that was it. And I always order um, on Fridays. And of course, um, I will get my uh, six packs of uh, Hennekin. And uh, so when I got married, I had kids and they loved pizza. It became a, a, a family meal. And uh, now when I think back, you know, in those days, the way and what I said about pizza and what is happening now with my kids and my family, how we love pizza, is just unbelievable. This is a typical example of cultural differences. Uh, when you go to a certain country, they have certain kind of food and uh, it's always a good idea to try uh, something new, something that you're not used to. So that was history. Kenny, we were living the dream playing soccer in San Francisco at a, at a world-class university. Look at this, 1983, Kenny, our stadium in the program. As you can see, there we were. Two partners in crime, Kenny Boardman, John Bustos, right next to each other, tearing it up. Great times, Kenny. That was us at USF playing soccer becoming super smart athletes. That's what it was all about and a super opportunity for all of us. We also had good times. Remember this one, Kenny? At a barbecue after a game? Look at this, Kenny, Kenny would never stop eating. That's why he had all those muscles. Look how skinny and young that guy was. <laughs> what a great time, Kenny. We lived it up, man. Need to keep playing soccer now. We hope the new generations come and enjoy all the good times we did with great times. Peace, Kenny. I spent four years at the University of San Francisco. During the four years, I really enjoyed myself traveling, partying, going to the beach, and dancing. I won many trophies at the University of San Francisco, such as the MVP West Coast Conference and the USF MVP. Kenneth Goldman started university in Nigeria in 2007 called SKB Executive Business Program. He negotiated and partnered with Lincoln University President Dr. Bruce Dusky. When we do something, we want to see the results. And you got the result and you will be given our diplomas which confirm their degrees. So again, congratulations. SKB Executive Business School was flying the professors from the Lincoln University, USA to Nigeria to teach in the program. The program was a success. The program graduated over 400 Nigerians. I'm overwhelmed. Thank you all of you for coming here. Yeah, uh, for coming here.